please your heart says you're able and let us worship with our open Somewhere in the country, it gets over 30 degrees today, which it's expected to do. But this week, things are going to cool down, so it'll be nice. Thankfully, the, the sun behind the clouds or the dust from the Sahara or whatever it is, it is keeping it a little cooler here this morning, but we're glad that you have come to worship with us. A couple of notices. Uh, this Tuesday is our monthly coffee morning, so I hope that you'll come and join us for that. If you're available Tuesday morning at 11 a.m., come and enjoy a time of fellowship and just a drink and a piece of cake and just some good matter together. So come and join us at 11 o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, this Friday evening, there will be a community meeting for the folks down area taking place in our church. They ask if they can meet here. Uh, and it's just about a few things. Uh, this, the local counselors will be here, and I think a representative from the police department and from the council. So if you want to come along, that would be great, especially if you live in the area. Uh, I'm hoping to have some coffee and biscuits available for people as they gather. So if anyone is free and can come Friday night and help you with that, the meeting starts at 6. So if you're free to come about half 5 to help with that, that would be great. Just let me know after the service. Uh, in two weeks, on the 24th, will be our annual Harvest Festival service. So I hope you'll try to be with us on the 24th for Harvest Festival. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe all of here, so it's been this week, isn't it? And then the first three Sundays in October, I will be away on uh, taking some annual leave. 
spending a couple of weeks of that uh, in the U.S. with my sister, uh, and then just some extra time off. Uh, Kev and Peter will be helping to lead the services while I'm away. Kev's going to be doing the sermon the first couple of weeks, the first three days. Uh, then Leslie Wilkes, who many of you know, uh, will be giving the sermon on Sunday the 15th. Uh, Leslie and Kim, unfortunately, can't be with us as often as they used to be because of their health, but they've been members of the church for a long time, and I know many of you know them, and we'll look forward to hearing Leslie on the 15th. So I hope they can come and support the church while I'm away. All right, we're going to continue in our worship together by singing and worshiping God and seeing what God might do in our lives today. So please stand as you are able and let us sing and worship God together.
Oh
I live behind a pub down in Southbourne and yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, in after about nine o'clock, they were having a special thing in the car park. It was right across the street from me and so I don't know, they were doing a barbecue and a few other things and they put out some really loud speakers and they had sent the notice around letting the residents in the neighborhood know. But I had no idea they were like that loud. <laughs> And it was that kind of dance music, that constant boom, 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 boom. And it made me think, you know, I reflect back a few years ago when I remember going to the pubs and dancing to that type of music. But yesterday, all I could think is, I'll be glad when 9 o'clock gets here and it stops <laughs> because it was really beginning to get to me. And it is amazing how life changes and we find ourselves in this different circumstances, whatever that it might be. It might be because of age, it might be because of other things. I know when I was younger, part of worship for me, I've always enjoyed lifting my hands as a sign of surrender to God. And you know, I used to way up here, but now I can't hold it up there very long because the medication I take for my heart will make my blood pressure go haywire and I start getting dizzy. So I learned to worship more like this. Or, and for you, worshiping God might be different than the person sat next to you. Because it is for all of us. And that's what's great about God. God is there for all of us and God gets each one of us. My hope is that you don't let anything keep you from worshiping and connecting with God. Whatever it is, however it is, with restrictions that might have come to you because of age or other issues, don't let it keep you from worshiping God, even if that worship of God is just you standing up and dancing before God on the inside. Let us go to God in prayer. <clears throat> oh God, we have gathered this day to worship you together. And for each of us, that can mean many different things. But God, we are so thankful that you meet us where we are. You never ask anything from us that we are not capable but you do multitude of times throughout scripture instruct us to worship you, to praise you. Not because you need it, but because we do. We need to remember there is someone who is greater than we are. And we need to remind ourselves to bow before you, to humble ourselves before you. So God, as we have gathered this day, help us to do just that. And in so doing, may we be reminded of how great the one who loves us is. In Christ's name we pray. we prepare for our scripture reading this morning. I invite you to rise again and let us sing together our gratitude. <laughs> Thank you.
Gospel of Matthew. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word you may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or, more, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Often in groups of people, we find disagreements. And depending upon how those disagreements are handled, can determine how the group goes and what is accomplished or not accomplished. Now, this can be groups of people like a church, it can be a team at where you work, it can be in a school. It can even be in friends, and it can be in a family as well. Jesus knew the importance of this, and he knew the importance of agreeing with, that each, with one another, and when there was disagreements, of how you handle that and how you deal with that. There is another place in scripture where Jesus says if you have a problem with your sibling before you bring your sacrifice to the altar go and deal with that first and then come before God as I well when we prepared this sermon then this morning I was having a quick look at Facebook and Henry had shared something that someone else had posted, a picture. And it says, you cannot treat people like garbage and worship God at the same time. And that puts it pretty plainly. And that's what Jesus was trying to get across. Now, how can you worship God, a God of love, who said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, and yet, treat other people like rubbish. And so, in Jesus' teaching, he tries to share with us ways to deal with issues that arise, problems that arise. And if we would only follow these, a lot of problems would be taken care of. Jesus teaches us dealing directly with one another. In the Gospel reading today, he says, if you have a problem, don't go talk to somebody else about it. Don't post about it on Facebook. It never ceases to amaze me what people put on Facebook. I'm like, what were you thinking? Talk about airing your dirty laundry. He says, you know, go talk to the person that has offended you. Go talk to them. Now, he's talking about this amongst believers in Christ, followers of Jesus. But I learned that this applies everywhere. 
I've seen it in work situations. Managing people and making them sit down and talk it through as opposed to talking to all the other employees about it. Put them at the table and say, you share your story, you share your story, we're going to sort this out right here and now. Sometimes you have to do that. And it's amazing how when people actually talk about things, that they begin to understand the other's point of view and what the other's feeling. And this can work in so many ways. Think of how many family problems could be solved if people would just talk about it at the board. Now, yes, you're always going to have those people who just refuse to talk about it. You might step forward and and try to talk about something with someone and the other person just doesn't want to listen, they don't want to now they still care. Well, Jesus says, if that's the case, in a body of believers, your next step is to take one or maybe two other people with you so that it can be witnessed there that it's not just you and that person, but there's others there as well. And often that will help then you get other voices. There's been a few times in our church that we've had to approach things in this way. Often it's just me as the pastor talking to someone, but sometimes I take another board member or two and say, we want to meet with you. We want to discuss this. We heard, you know, it's been told to us that you've said this or you've done this or whatever, but we've observed it. And we want to sit and chat about it. And just talk and, and see if we can't come to a resolution. And the vast majority of the times, resolution has come. And Jesus then says, if just talking with one or two people doesn't solve the issue, then and only then does it go anywhere else. He says, then it goes to the other church to sort out the matter. Keeping in mind that the size of churches back then weren't great, big. They weren't hundreds of people or thousands of people. They were more our size. We are part of an international fellowship known as the Universal Fellowship of Metropolitan Community Churches. And our churches were founded, as you know, in the LGBT plus community. <clears throat> And especially in the earlier days, when there was a lot of oppression for LGBT plus people in Western countries, thankfully that's less the case now, although it still is the case in many places around the world as we know. What we discovered was often people who feel oppressed have a tendency to want to oppress others or want to do things that make themselves look important. And this presented a lot of issues in our churches. People trying to, you know, make sure nobody treated them in a way that could be seen as making them feel less than. One slight word said, which was innocently meant, was taken the wrong way and Problems blew up. And what several of our churches started doing was looking at this passage, this particular passage that we read this morning, and saying, how can we address these issues in a way Jesus taught us to do so? And many of our churches developed a direct dealing policy, or some call it, as we do here, a direct dealing and conflict resolution policy. And examining what Jesus said, and how does that apply to us? We have a policy here that we got from looking at other churches and what they had done and, and pulling those parts that we thought was good for us. And we adopted the Board of Trustees, a, a drug dealing and conflict resolution policy back in 2007. And we did so so that we had guidelines 
based upon scripture that would help us when issues arose. And they say that <clears throat> if there's an issue, often just a word with the pastor can help figure it out. Sometimes it means that we have one or two board members to deal with it. Other times, it becomes a more church-wide issue, and that is normally handled by the board, by the whole board of trustees. And in all of my years here, only once has it reached the extreme uh, we had to tell a person they could no longer attend church here. So as the person came in, and unfortunately, from the beginning, it was causing problems. And we addressed and tried to get them to understand and, and said, you know, it developed to what we had to say, here is how you will behave and put it in writing and say, you have to sign this if you want to keep coming here because unfortunately their behavior was hurting others. But in all of the other times, we have been able to bring resolution, when, when we have been able to bring this to fruition, working with people, and people have agreed to, to meet with us, and talk things through. Jesus' words were words of wisdom. And he said, it's very simple. And I think the reason is, because we often imagine things in our own mind. Well, that person must have said this because of that or because of what that person said or, or because I did that or because this happened. And you know what I found out? Because my brain works that way. I don't know about yours, but my brain just likes to figure things out. And before you know it, I'm way over there. When in reality, the situation had nothing to do with that at all. It was something I was totally wrong about. But when I was open to talking and hearing, it was amazing how simple it was. I mean, imagine that. Jesus giving us something that actually works. <laughs> Later, in the book of Romans, Apostle Paul, the soon to be Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans, wrote this. <clears> Owe <throat> oh, no one anything except to love one another. I mean, think about that first part. Just don't owe anybody anything except to love them. Wow. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. He sums it up right there. If we concentrate upon loving each other as we love ourselves, if someone has a problem with you, something you've done, something you've said, how do you want them to handle it? Maybe you don't even have a clue about what's upsetting them. Do you want them to talk to everybody else in the church but you? Do you want them to post about it on Facebook? Or would you prefer that they come and chat with you? Because it could have been something you said, had no clue, no way you wanted to hurt that person. Didn't even think about that. It was just something you said about something else or innocently. Or it might have been something you said. It might have been something you said in a moment of frustration or hurt or anger. And then when they come to you, you have a chance to apologize, say, you know what, I was wrong. I'm sorry I hurt you. How many of you would like 
with other people who treat you that way. Mm. Jesus said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He also said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If that's the way we want to be treated, then it stands that we should be treating others that way. Now, I know what happens when I preach sermons like this. People are trying to figure out, who's done something wrong? Who's got <laughs> problems? What's going on about? Nothing, okay? Seriously, there's not a problem. Nothing's going wrong. This is the reading in the lectionary for today. But I'm also a wise enough pastor after 20 years of being a pastor to know that every so often it's good to talk about this and to remind us of what Jesus has said. And if you're curious about what the church's direct dealing policy says, if you've never seen it, if you go to the worship page of our church website, those of you who are watching, if you're watching on the website this morning, underneath the video, there's a link. Anyone can go there. Inclusive.church, look for it in the menu, the worship, or just inclusive.church forward slash worship. And under today's video, the worship, there's a link. You can click and download it. It's six pages long. It's not hard reading. But it, it highlights this scripture and talks about what does that mean for us. And it gives some examples, uh, a lot of specific things, well, some that any church has, but some more specific issues that can arise in churches like ours. It says, you know, this is, you know, we say, let's don't do this, let's do this. And then it talks about specifics of if there is an issue or a problem or disagreement, how to handle it. And so I refer you to that, and I hope that you'll have a look at it. One, for the health of our church. But also because, as I said, this is wider than just our church. This can help your family. This can help your other relationships. This can help with your neighbors, your colleagues at work, your friends. Because Jesus gives us a truth. Because Jesus wanted us to understand that life is so much better when we love each other as we do ourselves. I read something just the other day. I can't remember how it was. But it was talking about how many seconds in a day and how one little affront to us, you know, somebody treats you wrong in the queue at the shop or driving or whatnot, and how it could be just 10 seconds long, but we allow it to ruin all the other seconds of our day. And they're saying, how crazy is that? Jesus says, if there's a problem, don't let it fester. Don't let it continue. Just go talk about it. Deal with it. If the other person's not amenable to that, then there's further steps that you can make. But deal with it before it causes disaster in your life, in your family, in your work, amongst your friends, or here amongst your church. God, we thank you because you love us enough to give us instructions on how to deal with the problem of being human. You know that often our minds can take things and run with them. You know that sometimes we say things and do things that hurt others, even when it's not meant to do so. You know that sometimes we just have disagreements, different points of view. And because of that, 
You gave us instruction on how to work through that. So God, may first of all, we approach it with that love that you taught us. May we be willing to give the other person the benefit of a doubt. May we be willing to talk to them in love. And may we also be willing when someone comes to us because they have felt hurt or confused by something we've done. May we be willing to stop, to think about it, to reflect upon our part. May we be willing to say, I'm sorry, Repent to change our behavior in future. So that God, when others see us and how we deal with relationships with others, they will see the way you deal. They will see you in us through our behavior. that we can all abide in love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We take a few moments now to receive your gifts. May God bless you as you give. Thank you for your faithfulness. If you're watching online, I hope that you will also be able to give. The website's on the screen. Thank you for helping us continue our ministry. As we come to this table, it is right and fitting that first we take a few moments to go before God in confession, to confess those things that have separated us from God, separated us from each other and from ourselves. Those times when we have broken the commandments of God that says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and speed, strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Will you join with me in a moment of silent confession? Friends, we have the promise in Scripture that if we confess our sins,
God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Know that as you have confessed, you are forgiven. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed and handed over to be tried and crucified, he took from the table the bread that was there, and he gave thanks to God for it and blessed it. And then he broke it. And he gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took from the table the cup. He thanks God for it and blessed it, and gave it to them and said, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Let us pray. O oh God, we ask your blessings upon these elements, that they might become for each of us, your body and your blood. Reminders of your grace so freely given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the table of God is spread for the people of God. Come and let us feast together.
says, Jesus, welcome to everyone. Our desire is that all are welcome in this place. Thank you for coming today. And we hope that you have felt welcome, whether you're here in person or watching along. May God bless you. Would you rise as you're able for our benediction and our closing? Let us bless one another. God bless you and keep you. God make her face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. God lift up his countenance upon you and give you. Thank you.